Hey Church, it's such an honour to be with you today, wherever you are watching from. My name is George, I'm part of the team in our Manchester South location. And right now, uh, for our daily devotions, we're in a series called Favourite Bible Characters. Uh, if you've missed any of the episodes so far, you can catch up on our socials, so make sure you check that out after watching this. In our time together today, we're going to be looking at my favourite Bible character, Gideon. If you're new to the Bible, you can read about the life of Gideon in Judges chapters 6 to 8, and we're going to be reading some verses from those chapters today. Like many of the main characters in the book of Judges, Gideon came to be leader of the Israelites, God's chosen people, at a time when they had rejected God and chosen to worship other gods belonging to other nations. Specifically at this time, the Israelites were enslaved by a people known as the Midianites. And this is where our story begins. In Judges 6, verses 11 to 16, we read this. An angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak at Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abysrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. The first thing I notice when I read the scripture is that Gideon isn't surprised to be talking with the angel of the Lord. Gideon knew all about God. He knew all about what God had done for his people in the past. He only doubted that God was still with them. And so thinking that God had abandoned the Israelites, he simply asks, why? Why has all this happened to us? And the angel of the Lord doesn't even dignify Gideon with a response. He just proclaims, go in the strength you have. Am I not sending you? And still Gideon doubts and responds, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my family. The angel of the Lord doesn't answer him, but responds with an affirmation. Go, I will be with you. You see, Gideon isn't my favourite Bible character because of what he says or anything he does. He's my favourite Bible character because of what God reveals about himself through Gideon's life. And here we see God stooping down to the lowest member of the least prominent clan, saying this, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Why is it in our lives we so often decide that we're not good enough to be used by God? I'm not smart enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not wealthy enough, I'm not articulate enough, are just a few of the things that I've told myself in the past. Yet here we see God revealing that it was never about us and our ability, it was always about him. God called Gideon. Could it be that he's also calling you and me? Later on in the story, we read about how Gideon steps forward in his newfound God-given confidence and calls up an army to defeat the Midianites and release Israel from slavery. We read in Judges 7, verses 1 to 7, Early in the morning, Gideon and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel will boast against me, saying, My own strength has saved us. Now announce to the army, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say, This one shall go, he shall go. But if I say, This one shall not go, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap water with their tongues as a dog laps, and those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all others go home. In this curious turn of the story, we see God reveal something else about us, something else to us about his character. 
We see him take Gideon's army and reduce it down to a fraction of the size. What was once 32,000 soldiers became 300 versus 135,000 Midianites, making the odds of an already outmatched Gideon even more impossible. God even gives a reason for doing this. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. In short, God wanted the odds so bad that the victory would clearly be his and his alone. You don't need a master's degree in theology to know that this is a running theme in the Bible. Zechariah 4 verse 6 reads, Not by might nor power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Psalm 20 verse 7 reads, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Even Jesus chose to ride into Jerusalem, not on a war horse, but on a donkey. If we truly believe in the principle set before us in these passages and this story, then our smallness doesn't matter. When I look back at the times in my life when it truly felt like I was up against an impossible situation, the loss of a loved one, battle for mental health, unemployment, it was all too easy to forget just how big God is. Yet stories like Gideon's give us hope. Hope that no matter the situation, no matter how small we may feel against the giants in our lives, God is good, God is kind, and he is enough. Gideon's story continues, and with the army of 300, he defeats the Midianites and frees Israel from captivity. And sure enough, the victory belongs to God. After the battle, the Israelites ask Gideon to rule over them. But in Judges 8, verse 23, Gideon responds with this, I will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. In the end, Gideon gives full credit to God. In our time together today, we've only been able to cover a small part of Gideon's story. Um, so let me encourage you to get into the Bible and read more about Gideon and the other characters mentioned in this devotional series. I pray that as you read about them and you read about the goodness of God, you'll start to see his goodness in your own life. So be blessed, church, to know like Gideon, whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever your status, God has called your name and said, I am with you. And may you know, as Gideon did, God as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides out of your lack and the one who turns an impossible defeat into a perfect victory. Amen. <laughs>